So Mark, tell us about how CodeRush can help us when we're declaring types. Sure, Rory. There are two ways that you can declare types. One is if you have a sense of how the type is going to be used. And here, for example, I've got a method that takes a type that hasn't been declared yet. And inside that method, you can see I'm describing how that type is going to be used. So I've written the code from the perspective of the consumer. Sure, yeah. And some people would call this consume first declaration, where you see the consumption code in here. And then when I'm ready to declare it, I just put the caret up on the uh, type that I want to declare, and I hit the code rush key. Okay. And then I choose declare class. And here you can see in the preview that it's going to declare the class. In fact, you can see in here that it's picking up the methods inside. Let's look at everything that it's picking up. It's not just going to declare an empty class for me, but it's actually scanning through the code. And here you can see we've got a reference to an expire date that's comparing with this expression over here, which is going to be a, a date time. And sure. then it's got a method called force invalid. It's got a method called redeem. And it's got a property called value, which we're returning okay. right here through this redeem method. So Excellent. with that code written, I just come up here, I hit the code rush key, I'm going to choose declare class. And so here's the class travel voucher. So you can see it's got a constructor, there's the force invalid method, redeem method, expired date and value properties are all added for me automatically, just from that little bit of usage code that I wrote. Yeah, excellent stuff. So it's picked up the date time types of, of the property and the decimal as well, deriving that from your usage of those properties. Exactly. Uh, we've got methods that in this case, return nothing, they are void properties because they were just called, they weren't expecting to return anything. Right there and there. Exactly. Excellent stuff. So if we chose to add another method to a pre-existing class, would the same technique work? All right. Sure, Rory. Let's say, for example, we want to uh, do something like this, where we say date redeemed, and we'll just do DTN for date time now. Ah, another little snippet there. And so we're, we put the caret here, we hit the code rush key, and we're going to choose declare property, probably auto implemented. But you also have options to declare properties the same way Visual Studio does, where you throw exceptions in either one of those. Sure. And you have the ability to declare with backing store. Nice. But I'll choose auto implemented because it's sufficient for what we need to do. This is the target picker. And I'm just using the up and down arrow keys to select where I want to put it. Uh -huh. And then I press enter to drop it down there where I want to put it. Okay, so Kodra is very good, obviously, creating the class from your usage in the first place. But also, if you want to add additional usage after the fact, and then get those created by example as well, uh, consume first, as we've been known to call this, then Code Rush equal to the task in that case as well. So we've seen declare from usage. There's another way to declare classes and types. And I'll show you how to do that using templates in the next video. Okay, we'll look forward to it, Mark. Thanks very much.